everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Virtual Veg Fest Live. Super excited because I get to hang out with Kathy Hester today, which also means that you get to hang out with Kathy Hester today, which is awesome. We love cooking demos and I'm going to mute Kathy. because She's busy doing stuff in the background. So let's say thank you to Plant Based Network for sponsoring Virtual Veg Fest Live and also to Hodo Foods for sponsoring our lives this month. The only week that they're not sponsoring is the last week of this month. Why? Because we have someone who paid to sponsor that week and that's Living Harmony, Living with Harmony in Colorado. And because Dr. McDougall is going to be live that weekend. Just so you know, put that on your calendars. Haven't mentioned it yet. The other thing I haven't mentioned is we hit 100 episodes and blew past it. And I kept forgetting to mention it. Over a hundred of these have happened since I started last year because of COVID. Yay, it's been a lot of fun. Kathy has been my go-to person to fill spots. This was the one I gave her the most time because I gave her about two weeks to fill this spot <laughs> instead of day of because she's that awesome. Let's say thank you to our gain, Hodo Foods, Crofters Organics, and Follow Your Heart for donating our monthly prize packs that you can win. How do you do that? Go to virtualvegfest.com, click on the tab that says contest, and enter. You can win those prize packs just for doing something as simple as subscribing to Virtual Veg Fest on YouTube. If you can do that, we'd really appreciate that too. So if you have any questions or comments, cooking demo, always questions or comments, put them in the box. We'll definitely address them. And of course, you'll also get to kind of be a voyeur for my conversation with Kathy because we can't hang out and not talk for hours. It just doesn't happen, but this won't be that long. I promise. Hey, Kathy, cutting Brussels sprouts. Hey. <laughs> I am cutting Brussels sprouts. Good to I, see you. For those of you who did not watch my pregame live that I was doing, <laughs> <laughs> there was an accident outside my house, so I'm a little behind on prep, but that just means you get to see the prep. Right. I mean, Brussels sprouts are great to make, but the prep always takes forever. Oh, there they are. Let me get that in focus, you guys. There we go. It's coming. I promise. Look. Woohoo. Woo. So people usually, all I did is, and I can grab the trash, is that I cut off the ends. I didn't get all crazy. You can get all crazy and go ahead and take all that little cabbage end off. But we're just going to actually slice them. And it doesn't have to be like paper thin or anything. And then if it's a big one like this and you feel like, oh, no, I'm going to cut my finger off, just turn it over like this because we're going to break some of this apart. Some of this is going to break apart anyhow. And I've never done these with frozen Brussels sprouts, so I don't know if those would work. However, if you would like a lazier person's version of this, at Trader Joe's and other places, you can buy shredded Brussels sprouts. Or you could probably just put these on the slicing blade in your food processor. But when it's just a little bit like this, like really, this isn't that much. It's going to probably be about four cups, which I think is about a pound of Brussels sprouts. And you could do these this dish, we're going to do smoky maple pecan Brussels sprouts. So if you think you don't like Brussels sprouts, I'm about to prove you wrong because that's how I am. If you didn't know that already. <laughs> so, so Kathy, for people who don't know who you are, because, you know, there's people out there who don't know who you are, how would you tell them? <laughs> oh, sure. Here. And you guys probably saw enough Brussels sprouts. I'll switch back. Hi, I'm Kathy Hester, and um, I have 10 traditionally published cookbooks. My first one that more people know me from is The Vegan Slow Cooker. I also I do a lot of appliance things. I have Vegan Slow Cooking in Your Air Fryer, The Ultimate Vegan Cookbook for Your Instant Pot, Gluten-Free and Vegan Cooking in Your Instant Pot, The Easy Vegan, and more. I also run the vegan blogs, plantbasedinstantpot.com, which I bet you're guessing 
has all plant-based with SOS options. Recipes for the Instant Pot. Here's the tricky one. Healthy Slow Cooking, which is all vegan recipes, most with plant-based SOS options, but it's not all slow cooker. It's an older vlog, so it has air frying recipes, Instant Pot recipes, stovetop recipes, all the goodies. And then I also teach cooking classes. So I teach two cooking classes a month at Kathy's Cooking Club. And if you're interested, you can get um, older classes. You can watch the recordings and purchase those at kathyhester.podia, P-O-D-I-A dot com. So can you think of anything, ooh, anything else I need to say? Or does that seem good? No, that sounds, that sounds great. So everyone knows I also put in the notes that you can buy four of Kathy's books on virtualvegfest.com. Huge supporter yes, of what we do, which is great. And our best vendor, actually, just so you know. And we, we love, we love doing this. We love, we love chatting. And of course, like this weekend is the raw food yoga retreat. And Kathy is one of our cooks, our cooking demo people who will be doing that. Ooh, liquid smoke. I like liquid smoke. And you can get 50% off that event. If you purchase your tickets today at rawfoodyoga.com, enter the code Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y, capital K. If you do that, you'll get 50% off the event and the add-on, the premium add-on, which gives you over $400 worth of stuff from all the speakers, well, almost all the speakers. It's a great deal and it ends tonight. So tomorrow it's $20 per stage and $25 for that add-on. So what I can tell is going on next to us is water, <laughs> And I can, I can come back and tell you that. So I've got probably <laughs> about a quarter cup of water. because I'm, And then probably about a teaspoon of minced garlic. I don't know why it's looking so funky. I think it's just going through so many things. It's stretching this out in a funny way. So I'm putting a little bit of liquid smoke. I put some salt. If you don't use salt, you can use make up a super easy neutral salt substitute using one tablespoon of granulated garlic, one tablespoon of onion powder, and then a teaspoon of ground celery seed. And that makes a nice neutral salt. You could also even put a bouillon cube in here or something. I'm gonna just go ahead right now and put our Brussels sprouts because that's what's gonna take the longest to kind of cook. Let's get all this in there. And then I'll move this back where you can see it a little bit more. There and, we go. And Maria said, hello, what is liquid smoke derived from? Liquid smoke is exactly what it sounds like, which means they actually burn wood, uh, mesquite wood, hickory, pecan wood. They burn it and they catch the condensation. So that it gives a smoky flavor. If you are looking for um, a real pure one, if you look up pure liquid smoke, and actually, I'll let this cook a minute, and I'll look it up on Amazon really quick. There's, um, I'm out of it right now, or I'd show you the bottle. I think it's in my cart. Do, do, do. Yes, Lazy Kettle All Natural Liquid Smoke. Lazy Kettle All Natural Liquid Smoke is the one that you're looking for. And Helene can probably find that for you. And this is on medium high heat. And see, as these start cooking, I'm just gonna kind of crunch them around a little bit. That's why slicing is fine. And actually, I'm gonna, I was trying to decide, I think I'm gonna make this a little more colorful. So I'm gonna cut up a little bit of cabbage, just some red cabbage, and I'm gonna use just some already grated up carrots. You can easily grate your own carrots, but if it's, I knew this week was gonna be kind of a busy week. So when I was at the grocery, I bought some so I could make myself throw in some color for something like this or make, I have um, a carrot cake for one that you make in the air fryer and you can get that recipe 
on healthyslowcooking.com if you want under air fryer. So I'm just going to cut this fairly thin and then I'm going to chop it up a little bit. And Maria said thank you. So you're very welcome, Maria. Absolutely. Well, and I think the misnomer is I've only found one brand of liquid smoke that was filled with a bunch of crap. So, I mean, you can still look at the ingredients. The one that I often use that we find here in the South, Colgan, does have caramel coloring in it. Um, so in the ingredients, and actually I'll change here. So the ingredients are water, natural mesquite smoke flavor, vinegar, molasses, and caramel color. So I know yeah. a lot of people avoid caramel color. Um, if that's not you, then you're good. If it is you, then like I said, you can get that other one off of Amazon. I haven't seen it anywhere else myself, but that doesn't mean it's not somewhere. So again, we probably have about four cups. Here, I could probably move this where you can see the skillet and me. And then we have some show and tell goodies too. <laughs> because I'm all about that show and tell. And I have some extra water. So as I'm water sauteing, because I'm making this without oil. And like I said, you could put some salt in here or not. You could also put like some tamari. And this is a really good sanji tamari. Um, it's got 25% less sodium and it's gluten free. And I really like this brand a lot. They have some other, Helena, I don't know if you use them. Actually, I have one right here. Um, like there's a Thai peanut sauce. Mm. If you're not SOS, they're really good. If you are SOS, I'm working on um, a book of sauce recipes that are all SOS friendly. Oh, that's awesome. I, yeah, I've been using Eden Tamari. Yeah, Eden, Eden is good Eden too. Foods, yep. Yeah, I just, I like Sanji a lot because also I get like so many different kinds of sauces and most sauces aren't gluten-free. So Helene and I are gluten-free by doctor's orders. <laughs> so because of that, that means we have to do things a little bit differently. Here we go. There you go. You can see a little bit better. But it doesn't take away from the flavor or the foods that we eat at all. Right now, here we go. I give you a, a better view. And then I'm just going to take this cabbage and put some in. And I just think it make it doesn't give a big taste difference with the carrots and the cabbage. But I do think it just makes it look more pretty, more beautiful. And I love shredded carrots and sometimes instead of being lazy, I'll just go ahead and break out the food processor, shred up a bunch of carrots the same way. But you, you can know, see I, it just kind of brings some color into the dish. Yes, Helene, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I interrupted you. You know, I never liked red cabbage, but then I went to Fiction Kitchen and she puts the red cabbage into the tofu scramble. And so I started adding the red cabbage to my type of stir fries like this, and I love it. It tastes so it just, good. It does, and I make something called cruciferous crunch. So a lot of times when Brussels sprouts are in season, I'll use those too. So I, there ha it has to be awesome for me to be willing to get my food processor out. So just know that, because <laughs> I think food processor to clean is just a pain in the behind. Um, and you may hear my dog um, whine a little bit because of the accident. There's so many people outside. Um, and where was I, Helene, before Chris, the dog whining? Cruciferous Chris, 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 Crunch. Chris, yeah, that's it. Cruciferous <laughs> Crunch. So you can buy that already made at Trader Joe's. But they have it. It's in big pieces. It's usually like green cabbage, red cabbage, carrots, broccoli stems, sometimes Brussels sprouts and kale. So I save my broccoli stems when they come in the CSA or Misfit Market because I'm too cheap to pay the per pound and get the stem. Though I think now that I use them so much, it's worth it. And so I'll, and they'll save for actually weeks. Um, and so then I'll just shred carrots, shred the 
um, broccoli stems. Usually with the cabbage, I chop it up because it, it's good with the S blade, but not as good with the shredder blade on my food processor. This is starting to smell good, you guys. And I'm going to be adding a few more things in a minute, but look how pretty. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. Um, and cruciferous crunch. So then I have it where it's pretty well shredded down. And we use that on salads in bowls raw. I will actually take four cups of it, saute it with a sauce like one of these Sanji sauces and put some tofu in the air fryer and put it all together, like maybe a teriyaki or something like that. It's just a really easy way to have because like it probably makes 12 cups usually when I make it. And it lasts for 10 days because all of those are pretty hearty vegetables, which is kind of awesome. And so you're seeing me do this a little bit and I'll give you an overhead view so you can see that a little bit more. I'm just, cause again, I didn't shred these, right? I don't know why it's doing such a weird, weird little guy on this one, but you kind of get the idea, even though it's being strange. I, no. <laughs> I do not know why. I just don't, I don't know why that camera is being weird. But see how there's some that are like just slices and I'll just come with a wooden spoon. And now that they're a little softer, they just come right apart. And it's actually easier than me doing all that chopping. And you get this exact same effect as you do if you were buying shredded Brussels sprouts because they're not shredded perfectly either. And this makes a good amount of, of veggies. So usually for this, what I do is I make some mashed potatoes and then I serve this on top with either some air fried tofu or tempeh. And if you can't have soy, one of the things that I really love is um, Smiling Hara's Hempe. So they have a salt and pepper Hempe. So it's with hemp and peanuts. So do look carefully in case you have an allergy to peanuts, because that could be, that could be bad. Um, but it's so good and it has so much flavor in it and the texture is slightly different. Is there a tempeh that you like a lot, Helene? I've been using, I love Smarling Hara because they're, they're actually a North Carolina local company out of Asheville and one of our vendors. But I also like the other one, uh, Light Life. Yeah, Light Life is really easy to get to. And just another tip is, if you um, are gluten-free, the tempeh you can get at Trader Joe's is the three grain. And one of those grains is barley, which is not gluten-free. So just check if it's not just a soy that it, if you're gluten-free, if you're not gluten-free, please eat my share of the gluten too. <laughs> I would love that. Okay. And this is looking pretty good to me. Again, I'll just kind of get in there and get some of those. And we could add some other stuff. So to me, there's not enough liquid smoke. So I'm going to add a little more. I'm using applewood this time, but I just change it up. You may not like as much smoke as I do. So if you're new to liquid smoke, start with a quarter teaspoon. I will go up to three quarters of a teaspoon easily because I love smoky flavors. And I'm not needing to add any other liquid here yet. I'm going to smell it. I can smell the smoke the way I want to. If you are averse to using liquid smoke, you could use smoked paprika. And you can even put some in anyhow. So let's just do that. We could have sauteed some onion. I put about a teaspoon of garlic in there. But we can also go ahead and add some onion powder or garlic powder if we want to give it a little bit more flavor. So with onion powder, I'll probably start out with about a quarter teaspoon, just a hint. I don't really want it to taste oniony. And 
we talked about earlier too, the salt substitute I do actually is garlic powder, onion powder, and celery seed to make a neutral salt substitute because that gives it that bite that your mouth is kind of expecting from salt and it can be very lovely. And depending on what you're doing, you could add some soy sauce in here right now if you wanted to, if you wanted to get some umami that way. I think I have a little bit of mushroom powder. I know, Helene, you don't want the mushroom powder, but it's delicious. So I'm probably <laughs> going to put about half a teaspoon of that. So I got some mushrooms from the Asian market from Lee Ming's in Durham. And oh my God, they were beautiful shiitake mushrooms and the stems were super thick. Too thick for me to really use them the way I want to. And so what I did is I just sliced them, dehydrated them and ground them up into um, a powder. So mushroom powder can be very expensive or like Trader Joe's mushroom seasoning has a lot of salt in it. So this way you can control the flavor without going, well, I wish there was more X flavor, but it's already too salty. That's why I like to have the salt-free blends. I don't know about you, Helene. Are there some blends, some spice blends that you like a lot? I actually love at BJ's, they have an organic mm -hmm. spice blend that has like a million spices in it and no salt in it. And it's incredible. That's awesome. And there's tons of great... Um, salt-free blends. It's just sometimes they're not as neutral as I want them to be. So I'm going to put a good handful of pecans between an eighth and a quarter of a cup. And it's up to you. If you don't do nuts, you totally don't have to. You could put like some coconut bacon in here. I think that pecans kind of have that darker, almost bacony, smoky flavor already. So adding those in just kind of helps give you a little more texture, a little different flavor. And these are the way that I actually got um, Cheryl to love Brussels sprouts. And so the other thing, secret ingredient we're gonna do, so smoky, a little salty, some nuts, we can go ahead too, if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of nutritional yeast in here or not. It's totally up to you. I always smell it. And if you're not sure if something's going to go or not, just hold it like this. Was that a yum or a yuck for you? <laughs> and you'll know. You'll either be like, oh, I wish I hadn't smelled that or, huh, that's delicious. This clashed a just ever so slightly for me. I am going to put in some black pepper, probably an eighth of a teaspoon-ish. I'm going to put just a little more salt, probably another quarter teaspoon. And then lastly, I'm going to put in some maple syrup. You could use date syrup, agave nectar, really anything that you want but it's that sweet and salty with those cabbagey flavors that make cabbage haters and Brussels sprout haters stop because you, it takes all the bitterness out of it that was ever there. Okay, this is getting a little dry, so I either have to make a choice to put in the maple syrup or the water first. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably put about two to three tablespoons of maple syrup. And you should do it to your taste. If you're not eating very much sugar at all, you may need less than that. Um, if you're using date sugar or date syrup, you might end up using a little less because it's going to be a stronger flavor than the maple. Oh, you guys. I love maple syrup. Mm. Maple syrup is one of those things where you should just like drink it from the jug if it wasn't so expensive. <laughs> oh, and see, we got these like so before things got really bad again, we were taking our masking. There was a warehouse store, so it was really, really big where they were selling Amazon closeouts and things. So we actually got it. So each day was a different price, and we got six maple syrups or and 
Yeah, I think all of them were organic. This is one of them, organic Vermont maple syrup grade B, which I love. Seven dollars, six of them. Is seven dollars each or seven dollars for six? <gasps> yes, that's indeed. a really good deal. <laughs> well, and I also got a is it twenty five pound bag? The really big bag of flour. Mm -hmm. It's either twenty five or fifty um, for eight dollars of Bob's Mill Bob's Red Mill one to one. That's incredible too. And I'm yeah. happy to share some of that with you. I, I, I need, I need to go to that store, you know, I'm, well, I, I, <laughs> they said they weren't having as many, um, food items. So like Cheryl and I felt like we were becoming vegan preppers. So I've got like a couple of cases of Amy's soups and things like that, because we had a case of Amy's chili we got for $8. Well, it costs what? $3 a can. I'm going to taste it and make sure it's just right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, it's probably a little peppery for Cheryl's taste. And I really encourage you guys to make it the way you like it. So if you tasted it right now and you're like, okay, because I think the salt is good. You know, you don't really taste the mushroom powder. And Helene, you probably wouldn't notice it. Because mm -hmm. it's not a dominant flavor at all. It just adds a little more darkness along with the pecans. Um, it probably, it could take a little more um, maple syrup. And honestly, I wouldn't be sad if there was a little more liquid smoke. But if I was making this for someone who is not me, Cheryl likes smoky stuff too. I probably would stop about there. But you guys... This, what has it been? 30 minutes? And that included me cutting up all these things from yeah, scratch. Yeah, it's really fast. It's, it's, it's so, the, the longest thing is actually prepping the Brussels sprouts. And you can buy those already prepped up. That's true. So there, there's no shame in buying pre-prepped vegetables or prepping your vegetables ahead of time. So I would like to tell you that. So like when I make the cruciferous crunch, instead of doing that, I could actually dice some cabbage, you know, cut up my Brussels sprouts and have those in containers all ready to go so that when I just pull out my thing, then I just throw everything in there. And so if you're working all day, it's a super easy meal to make. Um, Helene and I were talking earlier and she was, she said she would air fry some potatoes to go along with this in the tempeh. I disagree. I think it's a mashed potatoes all the way kind of meal because it's almost like eating at a fancy restaurant because so you have this bed of pureed veggies, and, you know, pureed um, root vegetables. And you could do it on puree of celery root or a mix of cauliflower and potato. I do potato just because it's easy and I always have some to use up. And I make mine, if we're being decadent, we put a little Miyoko's butter in there, but most of the time we make them oil free. So I may, I maybe too. I use a little bit of homemade soy milk, um, salt, pepper. You could do some nutritional yeast. Mm -hmm. I have some Penzi's dried roasted garlic. Helene, oh, nice. have you ever tried that? I haven't, but that sounds great too. Oh, Penzi's is awesome. Oh my God. So you can make roasted mashed potatoes by doing nothing. And I like that. <laughs> so my little my little pockets of heaven, as I called my air fried potatoes, because I cut them up and we disagree, but I think they're little pockets of heaven. So like little baked potatoes, the absolutely adorable. What I do is I put liquid smoke on them before putting them into the air fryer mm -hmm. along with seasoning. And I actually will take a spray of the organic olive oil spray and I'll just go ch -ch -ch and toss. And then put those into the air fryer and they come out, like I said, little pockets of heaven. I think they would be delicious. <laughs> Just not with this. Right. <laughs> I feel strongly about the mash with this because I like the way it layers up too. So you layer it in your bowl and you put, pile this up and then you drop the um, crispy tempeh all on top of it. But one thing I do with potatoes too is then I just rinse them, especially if they're new potatoes, I cut them and then I rinse them. And then maybe I use a little bit of salt or salt substitute and some Cajun spice blend and smoked paprika. 
and then it just clings on. So mm-hmm. I usually do those without oil, but either way works great. Yeah, Stephen really likes when I make the potatoes like that. There's, I mean, I, and instead of making them into like little, little triangle things, I've been cutting them into like slices. So wedges. Mm-hmm. So I've been wedging the potatoes, and he was like, "Oh, I love wedge potatoes." <laughs> so everybody loves wedge potatoes. I I think that might be dinner. You know, funny thing. Last night we like Stephen made dinner because so I've been working later, and he downstairs, and one of the things he made didn't come out. It wasn't his fault. It was the product. And I won't say what it is because I don't want to do that. But like we could, I couldn't cut the knife through it. It was the strangest thing. So, but he made sauce on Monday or one of these days this week, he makes sauce and it's absolutely incredible. And I made bread (laughs) a couple of nights ago. So our dinner was the sauce on bread. Oh, there's no shame in that game either. It was so but, good. I was uh, like, is there more sauce? I was like, just make sure we didn't. Because I was so upset that the product that we didn't eat that went out to compost had sauce on it. I was like scraping the sauce off. <laughs> that's funny. Well, I make a bolognese, a vegan bolognese sauce that's like, you can leave out the mushrooms because I know you won't like that, but it's got like minced mushrooms, eggplant cauliflower, carrots, a whole bunch of stuff. So basically it ends up staying minced in the tomato sauce and it makes it look like a bolognese. Mm-hmm. And my favorite way to eat that is over like a thick piece of toast. That's what we ate. Because, <laughs> you know, so talking about the bread, right? I bought a bread machine. I posted it on some of my social media and oh. absolutely incredible. I made a gluten-free bread. Oh, you haven't finished that yet? That is, It's still good and it's still soft. Yeah, in that bag because no. I had some today. So I, I made that gluten-free bread first and when I brought the bread maker home. But then I bought this flour from Sunrise Mill flour in Minnesota, mm-hmm. or in, wherever they are. I think they're in Minnesota. And their gluten flour, whole wheat flour and flours they have, are supposed to be good for people who are gluten intolerant. So I figured I'd give it a try because they mill the flour themselves and it's organic and no pesticides, no herbicides. It's everything that flour used to be when people were less, were more tolerant of it. And they've just, wheat flour now is just so chemicalized and destroyed by the time you get to it, if you best buy a package in the store. So I made bread with that flour, came on Tuesday. The loaf, I mean, no joke, it was like a foot high. Oh, oh, I bet. If you've been cooking with gluten-free and now you're cooking with meat again. It's a <laughs> it was amazing. And that's the bread we had with the sauce. Like that night we had, we, we ate dinner that night, like 11 p.m. But because you know, it took it took four plus hours to make the bread. And then I had a meeting at nine, which went to 10 something. And then we were eating at 1030. So <laughs> it was, yeah. So that, but it was fresh made bread. And I'm okay from eating it so far you know knock on wood but i want you to try it to see if you're okay because i'll totally make you a loaf of bread i mean i'll you know it's it's not my four hours it's four hours in the bread machine (laughs) right i totally try it i did like so i found that i can have a tiny bit of wheat every once in a while so like um bonds on ninth street on wednesdays and saturdays they have a vegetarian plate it's like the most beautiful tofu in a black bean sauce with broccoli and sticky rice. It's delicious. Um, But there's some soy sauce in the black bean sauce and there's a tiny bit of wheat and soy sauce. So I've been able to do that, you know, like once a month without, because what happens to me is my joints get a little achy. And so it's just like, that's where I can tell it. Um, And we did get, I got my first vaccine on Monday, so my joints are a little bit interesting anyhow. We didn't have super bad side effects or anything, Um, but, you know, your immune system gets triggered, so it's it's like I've had a cold. So I felt a little run down, tiny, tiny bit achy. And I think with the second vaccine, it gets a little bit more. I would, I would, I would clear your schedule after the second vaccine. I'm going to take three to four days completely off because I, I was surprised. So like, I, I'm kind of sensitive anyhow. So like, I definitely had some inflammation from the shot 
And then I was really, really tired. So like I ate dinner and I think it was 5.30 and I laid over on the couch on Cheryl and she said I was snoring before I even like landed on her. Oh. I was like out. And so <laughs> I today was the first day that I got up early and took my three mile walk and did my normal stuff. So it's that I definitely feel better and I'm certainly super grateful to have gotten it. So if you're in the area, um, we ended up going to Greensboro. We live in Durham. So when we were able to get into a drive through clinic, so Cheryl did it like she does um, when we go to Disney and the fast passes. <laughs> so, so it's a game to her, which is super awesome. So she'd be like, I'm going to get this and now I'm going to move the time. So we get, so like, she's just like waiting for somebody to give something up to, to get it. And we were able to get the same time at the same place and not even have to go inside anywhere. It was beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. Because I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't think I've said it on here, but I'm part of a vaccine trial, as you know, and I had my second shot two weeks ago, two weeks ago today, actually. And Ooh. I was... I was I was okay that day. I felt weird, and I still worked out. And after I took a shower, my arm started really hurt. And then I woke up the next day with a fever, a headache, shivering, <laughs> fatigue, malaise. I was like body, like I felt like I was hit by a truck. And I'm in a trial, so the, you know, I two out of three get the vaccine, and one out of three get the placebo. And I feel pretty confident that I'm vaccinated <laughs> based on my experience the day after. And oddly enough, the my headache and the fever broke at the same time because the headache was from the fever because I was over 100. And mm. I was able to work out. <laughs> I actually got, I got my workout in that night, which was like, Stephen that I was out of my mind, but I was like, I was worried during the day that I wasn't going to be able to, but I did. I thought you were a little out of your mind. <laughs> I've been doing a lot like with the pandemic and I got kind of bummed out. Like I, I think you and I have talked about this some, cause I think it's been a long pandemic longer than I think any of us thought. So I think there's been some ups and downs and I've noticed with some of um, my readers and watchers that they're, they too are kind of having like blahs, like spring seems to be helping. Um, but because of that, what I decided, I made a deal with my body and I said, if you let me just be a real girl again, I will let you sleep however long, whenever you want to. <laughs> and there have been some long marathon sleeps, but I've been able to do more things. And so I, I think there's a tendency to go, let's just push through this. It's going to be okay. And your body finally is like, this mm. is like 365 days of this, you need to back off and give me some space, right? It's like, kind of like being quarantined with someone. We are quarantined, unfortunately, sometimes with ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, my spouse is kind of cranky. And you're like, oh, I'm way crankier to me. <laughs> and so, because um, like, I've been talking some about the raw food yoga retreat that's coming up on Saturday and Sunday, because it's been hard to do self care when you feel a little down, right? Cause you don't really have the energy. I don't have the energy to go clean the bathtub to run a nice bath or to do something like that. So you have to kind of be a little more creative. And I love the idea that it's two days, three stages and you pick what you want. Like for the people who are serious exercise people, there's the hit training, right? I'm not going to be going there. But the Saturday <laughs> hit class is actually a beginner class. It's it? sun it's on Sunday. He's doing a medium advanced one, but Saturday is beginner. Okay. Well, any restorative yoga, yin mm -hmm. yoga, heart centered yoga, yeah. that's that's my jam. There's like some incredible yeah, incredible yoga instructors in this event, the Qigong and the HIIT classes, stage three. If you're interested in just exercise and you haven't purchased your ticket and you're going to purchase it tomorrow, buy stage three and you'll have access to that for a following week and you have at least at least 10 different classes 
over the course of the two days. There's like five or six each day. It's amazing. But better yet is to buy it today before midnight, right? Is midnight the cutoff? It should be. And and you know what? Katie's on West Coast time, so it might even be 3 a.m. Okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, you want to buy it while you're awake on Friday. I'm, I'm sorry, today's Thursday and today. Yes, today. because we had to do that so that if you bought your ticket tomorrow or over the weekend, we wouldn't have to rush around to send you your stage, like your your tickets to your stage. And that's like really important. So there's three stages. So everyone who buys the tickets is actually going to get three different emails or three different stages. And that's how you'll access each stage because they're not wow. all they're not all in one. So everyone who buys their tickets today gets full access to the event. We'll get all three stages. We'll get three different emails. And I'm going to do a video and send that out to everyone who has a ticket right after we're done with this. Oh, that's a great idea. And you, I know we have a week access, so does that mean it ends on next Sunday or does it end like that Friday? Do you know what the date is for that yet? And if not, I'm sure you'll put it in that video that you're gonna make. So I may be asking too soon. I would, I would think you would go through the following weekend and we can control that. So okay. it can go through the following weekend. And then for people who just kind of, you know, come in late and go, I completely missed it. And it's, oh, we have a tornado watch until 9 p.m. Just so you know. So everyone who like completely misses this and it's Tuesday of next week and you're like, oh, I would have totally loved to do that. But well, you still can. It'll still be for sale. And then I think at that point, you might even get it for longer. I haven't quite decided or figured that out yet, but you can buy it and you have access to it for, I think, up to a month. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, because you're going to pay a little bit more then, but you'll have it for longer. Well, and the reason, to me, because I'm, I'm Susie Bargain Hunter, if you guys didn't figure that already about my Ben City Amazon warehouse store stuff, is that it's you? It's going to be fifty dollars tomorrow just to get the ticket for the stages, and it's twenty five dollars today. Actually, it's going to be post. sixty tomorrow. It's going to be twenty oh, per wow. stage, so it goes okay. up significantly. So it's sixty dollars tomorrow, twenty five dollars today with the code Kathy, and um, then tell us about the bonuses. I in the live I did earlier, I tried to show mm -hmm. a couple of things. I didn't get to the books. But there were, I was trying to read some off of that spreadsheet. It seemed like there were several hundreds of dollars worth of value and it's $25 without a discount today and it's $12.50 and that's the VIP bonus. So there's lots of eBooks and consultations and group consultations, private consultations. Is there anything that you think is like super awesome that, we should make sure we're not going to miss out on. I'm sure there, it's all wonderful. So I don't mean to say anything, but is there one, if there's one thing you don't want to miss, what would it be? I don't, I don't want to miss the yoga, but I also want to go to a couple of the raw food demos. There's, there's the Karen Ramsey's doing the raw food rav, ravioli and, mm -hmm. and Chris Kendall is doing a raw, a raw lasagna food demo. And they both look absolutely incredible. I mean, amazing. <laughs> so uh, yeah. that those are things like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do anything because we're going to be actively making sure everything is, is working while you're all doing your thing and doing stuff in between each of you and it's three stages. <laughs> so I, I'm going to try because I mean, I'd love to be doing yoga, some of this yoga with everyone, but it, I just might be one of those people that kind of, observes and does the classes later because <laughs> you know you never get to you, you, when you when you produce events you don't get to participate in them you get to work them i so, can understand that yep that's just how it is but all the speakers get tickets so you can you know do that and i created a whatsapp today for all of you to communicate and if there's any issues which you know, hopefully there won't be, but it's technology. And as you know, when you run outside because there's an accident behind your house or potentially the power can go out because there's sparks behind your house right now, you don't know, or a tornado, we, our weather is, you know, everyone who's, who's local to us, please be careful 
And yeah. I'm sorry for the people in Mississippi and Alabama who just experienced some severe weather with tornadoes that is headed our way right now. Just heed the warnings and be careful because it's weather just like live. It's unpredictable. It's, it's true. And everything manages to work out on live video, you know, yep. um, it's just the way it is. I felt, I felt like I brought the drama to my life <laughs> yeah. without doing anything but running outside my house. Wait, did you hear that? <laughs> you know, nobody heard it, but I'm like, it was a big crash. Those were big cars. And yeah, it, it, and the same thing with lives and weather and all of that stuff. But so I was ask, actually asking about the bonus stuff. I, I, was, I, I wasn't it. sure. So, so, you know, I, I, I thought you were, but I, then it seems like you know, maybe you weren't. So if Vinny Vegan from Gangster Vegan is giving free access to my Gangster Vegan Get Right Food Transformational course, that's a $125 Ooh. value. I mean, remember, oh, wow. you're either paying $25 or $12.50, and that alone... I mean, that alone. And then Angelica, who's doing yoga, is giving away a copy of her book. I'm sure it's an ebook. How I Made a Million Dollars Teaching Yoga. Hmm. Yeah. I bet that has some great tips. I would imagine it would have some great tips. And most of these, I mean, most of them who are doing consults are probably going to do them as group consults because a lot of people have purchased the add-on. And that's a lot of people to do individual consults with. So most likely they're going to be doing like a group consult and record it through Zoom or do a couple of them. But still, there are, um, there's like so many. And then of course, Rebecca from Perfect Foods is, has got gift certificates towards Ooh. their, their seven day raw vegan reset cleanse and a free one-on-one -on -one raw and real coaching session with Rebecca. And I think she might actually do that one-on-one -on -one with people. A 10% off awesome. a sprouting kit. Yeah. So, I mean, they're just, everyone really like came through with making their time and donations for this add-on. And, you know, and of course on Facebook, there's a group, Raw Food Yoga Retreat. There's a group that you can join and the speakers are in there. So you can, and the people attending hopefully will join in there. So you can all talk to one another before and during and after the event. So if you have any questions, you can actually reach out to some of the speakers that have joined the group. And that's, I love that. yeah, so that's, that's going to be like our, well, my weekend, it's just a piece of yours. <laughs> What well, about hopefully I'm going to get to do some of it. And then I still need to give you the code so you can send out. Because even though I'm doing um, cauliflower rice sushi and I got this beautiful purple cauliflower mm -hmm. to make it with. So I've got some ideas with that. And on the VIP bonus, I'm going to give away my um, sushi class that I did last year, which is really good. It's a really good class. And that class is thir worth $35. Yeah, so I if you get the top awesome. 50 and you just pick one or two things, you've more than done well for it. Yeah. I mean, it's there there's there's no lack of of items for that, you know, $25 or today $12.50. For $37.50, you can attend the whole thing and get the add-on and have a weekend of raw cooking demos and talks and yoga, qigong, hit classes. And this is like international. I don't know if people realize we've got Ooh. Spain, Australia, Costa Rica, Sweden, England, all involved with this event. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. that's so there will really be, cool. there will be accents. And I thought before we go, cause I'm also, do, there's a gluten-free festival, the Nourish Fest, I think is this weekend too, but I think you get to come back and watch that stuff. But Goody Girl, who usually doesn't have vegan cookies, they often have eggs in them. These s'more cookies, they just sent me, and I was telling Helene about them, so I thought we should open them and try one. So hopefully this is in their benefit. I'm sure it is. I know, because, she, I mean, it's a cookie, but there are some cookies that are really gross. Well, Cheryl has eaten the Goody Girl cookies before and really liked them. Okay. Um, 
Ooh, they smell really good. I was wondering. <laughs> oh, it's because sometimes I can't remember, but there's been a couple of vegan uh, vegan gluten free cookies, and I smelled, and they they just smell weird. Mm -hmm. This definitely smells campfirey. I smell the the graham crackers and the um, marshmallow. Oh, these got a little beat up, so that's probably from yours. Probably won't be quite as beat up. So it's got some. <laughs> chocolate on the side it's got some yummy white cream in here Ooh. they're crunchy chocolate, chocolate side is good ram cracker side is good <laughs> and the middle is good too so let's try it all together oh yeah so it would make for a good crust for a pie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, these are delicious. So, again, I know we've talked about some stuff. These are not whole food plant-based, <laughs> SOS friendly, or anything like that. The first ingredient is sugar, as one would expect with a sandwich cookie with icing. Um, but, I mean, it's really, it's really not that... Bad. Let's see, sugar, rice flour, palm oil, cornstarch, gluten-free whole grain oat flour, tapioca starch, gluten-free rolled oats, some sunflower oil, cocoa, and then 2% or less of brown sugar, potato starch, natural flavors, refined syrup, natural flavor, um, xanthan gum, sodium bicarbonate, soy lecithin, salt, cinnamon, molasses, and um, ammonium bicarbonate which I think is baking, baking soda. soda. Yep. <laughs> Fancy baking soda. <laughs> but um, this makes me super hopeful too, that maybe they're going to start making some of their other cookies without eggs. Cause they have like birthday cake sandwich cookies. They have a lot of really neat flavors. They have some of the Girl Scout type cookies too. Oh, wow. That which would be is awesome. also why I wanted to pull these out while we were talking because Hello, vegans who are not necessarily SOS or whole food plant-based. Why don't you buy a box and maybe they will make more cookies for us. There you go. That's how it works. That's consumerism 101. <laughs> right. And it's really good. It's not. And here's what happens when I buy, if I buy a box of cookies, I usually will put them in a Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. You could even put them in the freezer in a Ziploc bag so that you have one or two every couple of weeks if you want to so um these aren't going to get just torn down if these if i look and they're a little more broken down than i think they are then i probably will do what helene was saying and pulse them in the food processor put them in a bag in the freezer and then use them for like a cheesecake or a cake uh, a pie, pie crust yeah mm -hmm. like or I, I like to make mm -hmm. little parfaits i have some little parfait glasses and i was doing this back before the pandemic <laughs> for little desserts and you sprinkle that and have some pudding and some fruit and some stuff and then sprinkle some more and you can make the perfect like multi faceted dessert that way that sounds delicious too like a chocolate mousse and, and like coconut cream and strawberries or blueberries and mm -hmm. layer that layer that baby up yeah. yeah in the great vegan bean book i have some parfaits and i used i think vanilla wafer type cookies in the bottom but then i used red lentils and rose water and made a pudding that oh, works wow. out really well because the red lentils just you know melt away anyhow it's just kind of fun to throw a like a, a a nice little shout out to fran costigan who you know i know and will be on virtual retrust live soon she has the best recipe for chocolate pudding like the best ever now i understand for me like growing up you know that they, they used to sell chocolate pudding in a can mm -hmm. i would call it like you know it not it's not real chocolate pudding it's like chemical chocolate pudding but it had that taste that was so good it just had a flavor to it that was like oh this is like canned chocolate pudding this is the best Hers tastes like that, but it's not even close to canned or anything. It was, it's, it's made on the stove. It's, 
I watched her do it live in New York City, and I have the recipe, and it's amazing. Is she going to make that on the show? I have no idea. But you should have asked her. I've been seeing her a lot. So she's been in Clubhouse. She has. So I don't know if anybody yep. watching, too. There's a lot of vegan plant-based stuff going on in Clubhouse, which right now is an, a social media app that's for iPhone and iPad only. But I hear it's coming to Android possibly by summer. Yeah, we'll and go it, on to Clubhouse. Eventually, I'll get on there. Once once this event is done, I'll, I'll, I'll have a tiny bit more free time. And... I'd like to go on there. We'll do some shows and we'll talk about a whole bunch of stuff and bring Kimberly because your virtual virtuous live is expanded to fireside chat with Kimberly on Monday at seven and coach Kayla uh, at 7 PM on Wednesdays, all Eastern time. And those are two additional shows and they're fantastic. So to bring them into the fold and do like Q and a and questions that you have about veganism and health and cooking and, you know, events, it's, it's everything. It's really fun too. Cause like, <laughs> It's kind of nice because you get to get this really good community feel and everybody's voice gets to be heard. You can ask questions or add things. Like today, I did a room with Doris Stone from Doris Table. She does amazing vegan Mexican recipes, like amazing. So we did one about convincing her to get an air fryer. She's like, I don't have an air fryer yet. So I was going to say that. I was like, get an air fryer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that she is now. Like we had a talk and actually Fran came in and was chatting. Um, and so it was really awesome. And Chef AJ came in and we were talking oh, about nice. that too. I'm on my fourth air fryer. <laughs> well, I don't have normal amounts of appliances. I, I'm not too far behind. <laughs> I have well, two I air fryers, I, so. And I gave I one away. Right now we only ha we have three regular air fryers and two instant pot air fryer lids. But I've given away four air fryers and I give away instant pots and stuff, but I think I'm keeping five instant pots. Because <laughs> if I do a class and I do five recipes and it's an instant pot class, it's super helpful. Right, I totally understand. I sometimes use two air fryers. Yeah, and you have to be, so those of you out there in the world that maybe are using two air fryers, make sure they're not on the same circuit. Correct. <laughs> right. right. Microwave, air fryer, instant pot, griddle. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't see over here, but over, over to the side, I have my breville. So the breville is plugged into the same circuit that our microwave is on. So we often blow that out because we forget. Right. Like if we're crisping up something and then we're like, oh, let's just throw that sauce in the microwave real quick. And then it's downstairs. a trip downstairs. Going downstairs. <laughs> I like know your house. I've never been in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I have to be mic'd like this. And I'm so, I think, let me see. There may be someone in our driveway. Yeah. <laughs> but they're going. It's not for the accident. See, I dressed up for you guys in my sweatpants, but <laughs> good sweatshirt, so you guys get to see that part. So hopefully that helps. That's okay. Uh, I'm normally I'm normally in pajama pants. As everyone knows, when I'm live, I'm actually in jeans today. <laughs> so yeah. secrets of below the what you see. <laughs> I know. That's why if I walk that way or wash my hands, then you know it all. I've got the Crocs on and everything, but. Like I said, good sweatshirt. <laughs> well, good Kathy, this is this has been as fun as I anticipated <laughs> it to be. <laughs> and then the problem is that we could keep going live for like hours just talking, and we don't want to do that. <laughs> no, because I have something else at six. It's been like a busy thing, and then I have to fingers crossed. Everybody, keep your fingers crossed for me that I get to keep power through my thing tonight because I'm teaching yeah. people how to do some vertical videos to so some reels and TikTok and YouTube shorts and you guys want to see that so get that mental energy coming my way yeah I know I hope so hopefully hopefully the weather isn't as bad as it as it could be so make sure you send me that login and password for your newsletter I will and we can chat about that real quick right when we right before I leave forever that's true all right so <laughs> thank you and I will see you in a few minutes <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. And if you have some questions, just let me know. Oh, definitely.
<laughs> well, thank you everyone so much for watching another episode of Virtual Veg Fest 5 with Kathy Hester. And as usual, you get to just kind of be part of our conversation, which is always, well, it's fun for me. <laughs> I know it's fun for Kathy. So please make sure that you wear a mask, even if you're vaccinated. You still want to wear a mask. It's important because there's some things I still don't know, right? But for your protection, for the protection of others, wear your mask, wear it correctly over your nose and over your chin and make sure you do that so because your nose connected to your lungs and if you don't cover your nose, then you don't really need a mask because you're not protecting yourself or others anyway. If you have the means, please go and dine out at restaurants and food trucks and curbside pickup and delivery for your plant-based and vegan restaurants that are local to you. Go for it. Now, I mentioned just a few minutes ago that we have two new shows on Virtual Veg Fest Weekly. On Monday, we have Fireside Chat with Kimberly. And then on Wednesday, we've got Find Your Purpose. I can't remember the name of Coach Kayla's show, but you want to watch. 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Mondays and Wednesdays, two new shows. We're probably going to add some other stuff. We're looking at weekly yoga and Whatever else, whatever else we can do so that you have variety and it's not just me. So subscribe to Virtual Veg Fest. Please support our sponsors. Hodo Foods actually sent me an email this week saying thank you for supporting them because they've seen an uptick in followers. So thanks to all of you for doing that as well. Have a great night. No talk this weekend. Virtual Veg Fest is taking a break so that we can do raw food yoga retreat all weekend, go to roughfoodyoga.com and check it out and join us because we'd love to see you. Outside of that, I will see you. Oh, I should tell you what's happening next week because I'm not here on Saturday. So next week on Thursday is Dr. Akhtar. Aisha, I, I'm sorry. Aisha Akhtar is coming on, which is awesome. And then on Saturday, I already mentioned Dr. McDougall. Yay, Dr. Tom McDougall's coming on. Ah, both talks are at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And I'm excited because <laughs> Dr. McDougall is actually going to do a conversation. Now the talks, you can get to know him. As of that, have a great night. Bye.